this image was captured with a $400 smart telescope. And this image was captured with a $10,000 astrophotography rig. Same night, same sky, same comet. And I have to say, the Dov Mini really surprised me. Being the smallest smart telescope in the world that fits in a pocket and even in Santa's beard. So Santa can take it like this from his beard, put it on a tripod and start imaging. So in this video, I want to show you the differences on capturing a faint comet and a nebula with the smallest telescope in the world compared with a large beast like my 10 inch Newtonian that is part of an expensive $10,000 astrophotography rig that has also a dedicated astrophotography uh, harmonic mount, the ZWAM5, with a dedicated custom made steel pier, a cooled astronomy camera, guide scope, guide camera astrophotography PC, and also other accessories like filters, large dew shield, etc. Looking now in Stellarium, we can see where the comet was positioned on the night sky on the night from 8 to 9 December 2025. And uh, we can see that nearby is also a nebula called SH2188 called also Shim Nebula or Dolphin Nebula. And I was curious to see if the Dove Mini can capture this comet that started to be really, really faint in December. So I decided to use the Dove Mini to capture also the, this nebula. And in this video, I'll show you also how to change the framing of your target using the Dove Mini or the Dove 3. Currently with the Dove Lab app, you cannot keep the object you selected in center and just move the imaging frame like this. In order to change the field of view, uh, the framing, uh, you need to select a nearby object like a star. And I've selected one of these stars here to be in center. So I was able to capture also the Shim Nebula and the comet in the same field of view. The focal length is 150. This was the focal length of the Dove Mini Smart Telescope. Before I had the focal length of the 10 inch Newtonian telescope that I'll show you also the comparison. We do have a larger field of view with the Dove Mini that was an advantage here. Setting up the Dove Mini was very easy and super fast. I've just pressed the power button like this and I took it out place it on the tripod and I've just rotated the tripod towards Polaris and basically I was ready to image. Optionally, you can also fine tune the polar alignment using the EQ mode feature to have a precise polar alignment that is very useful for longer exposures over 60 seconds. Fine tuning was very fast. Dove Mini captured a few images of the night nice sky, calculated the position and I was able to make the necessary corrections in a few seconds. After that, I searched the nebula in the menu, selected it, find it and decided to reframe the image by selecting a star that was close to the middle of the frame. So this way I had also the comet on the left part of the screen, the upper part, and also the shim nebula on the right. So once I've done this, I entered again the setup, I refocused to make sure the focus is sharp and selected the settings, 60 seconds, gain 60. I already had captured darks, so I just pressed the start button. And the Dove Mini started to image and live stack the Comet C2025 K1. The image will become better and better. We will start to see details and color in the nebula. However, because it's not comet stacking, it's stacking on the stars, we will see the comet faint and have some artifacts because the comet is actually moving across the field of view of the image. Different speed and direction comparing with the movement of the stars. 
and it was this simple to image with the Dove Mini. Now let's go to the expensive 10k dollars dedicated as a photography setup. Imaging with a 10 inch Newtonian that uh, is set it up with a dedicated Astro Cult camera takes a little bit more time compared with the Dove Mini. I had to take first the rain covers and uh, turn on the mini PC, placed the camera cables back. Uh, then I had to place the dew, dew shield and the dew heater. You might have to place back also the camera if it's inside. So in this case, I had the camera on. I just needed to place the cables. So setting up took only about five minutes because I had everything on the harmonic mount and on the steel pier. So, and the telescope was already set it up. Uh, having a dedicated setup does have the advantage of being able to rotate the camera sensor so you can compose better and frame better the image if you want. However, in this situation, the camera was not orientated in the best position. So I had to go outside and uh, move it back, then go back inside, test it, take some images and check the rotation position of the camera. And I had to do this several times until I had the uh, best rotation to capture the comet and the ship nebula in the same field of view. Also the field of view with the 10 inch Newtonian and the crop sensor camera was smaller than the Dove Mini and it was harder to frame. So I was already in Nina, I had all the equipment connected, I rotated the camera, so I have the best orientation to start imaging. However, I forgot to check the polar alignment with the dedicated setup, so I decided to do also a polar alignment in Nina, and this took another 5 to 10 minutes. And it's always good to have also the polar alignment accurate with a dedicated setup like this, and especially with a large 10 inch Newtonian telescope. So setting up with the 10 inch Newtonian took about 30 minutes, and it took much more than the 12 minutes that I was able to start the photography plan in about five minutes. We are now in Adobe Photoshop and we have the final results. We have here an image of 60 minutes integration captured with the 12 mini. I also processed these images in PixInsight and Photoshop. Let's zoom in a little bit first and we'll go 100%. So I was really impressed that I was able to capture also the comet. The problem here was that the comet drifted, moved a lot, and I was not able to get a sharp image by uh, using the 60 minutes integration time. So I've combined the long stack with a short stack of two images, each of 60 seconds. So we have here an integration of 120 seconds for the comet on the image capture with the Dove Mini. And here we have the Shrimp Nebula. Zoomed at 100%, we can see the stars. And I have to say, the results was really, really good for just one hour integration with a small aperture telescope. I was quite impressed that with a pocket size telescope like the Dove Mini, you are able to get so much. Now let's compare with the 10 inch. And here we have the image capture with the 10 inch Newtonian and the cult dedicated astrophotography camera. And now let's see better the differences. We'll minimize. And this is the Dove Mini image. And this is the 10 inch. So first we can see the differences in the field of view. The 10 inch Newtonian had a smaller field of view compared with the Mini and it was much harder to fit the comet and also the Shrimp Nebula. Now we'll zoom in and check a little bit better here the image captured with the 10 inch Newtonian at 1000 millimeters focal length and zooming in like this we can see a lot of details on the Shrimp Nebula and I have to say I was even if I was able to capture only 24 images of one minute we were able to capture more details. So the large telescope resolved more details also the stars look sharper and also the comet. So we had only 60 seconds for the comet captured with the 10 inch Newtonian. 
I can see more details compared with the Dwarf Mini Smart Telescope. So with the Dwarf Mini, definitely we cannot get the same details as the 10 inch Newtonian. So 100% the large telescope wins regarding resolution. It's a question of how big is the difference between the two images. So much more details in the Newtonian image and regarding here the comet, but also for the stars. So if you look on the stars capture with the Dwarf Mini, zoomed in so far, we can see the stars are larger and not as sharp as in the image captured with the 10 inch. So we can see the stars here much more sharp and also smaller. There are some stars that basically are visible with a 10 inch Newtonian, but not visible with a Dwarf Mini because we do have a much smaller aperture and it was not able to resolve all the stars in the images. Also, we might have very faint galaxies. Here, these uh, spots here could be actually galaxies and those are not visible on the Dwarf Mini telescope. Now, let's zoom out a little bit because we went like 150%. And let's go where we have the Shrimp Nebula and compare again. See, the stars look better on the 10 inch. And also, here on the Shrimp Nebula, we were able to resolve more details. And this is how the Nebula look with the 10 inch Newtonian. The differences are visible. However, if we zoom in, we'll be able to see them better. Zoomed out, let me know what you think. How visible is the differences between the 10 inch Newtonian and the Dwarf Mini? So again, Dwarf Mini and the 10 inch. I would say even if we are not zooming in, we can see the difference between the two images and the details are more visible in the image capture with the expensive setup. However, I have to say that the Dwarf Mini performed really, really well. So if you are starting now astrophotography, I really recommend a smart telescope like the Dwarf Mini that can allow you to do astrophotography easy, fast and on a small budget. It's affordable, it's easy to use, easy to set it up, super portable, you can take it everywhere you go. And if you want to invest more after, you can do it without any problems. The Dwarf Mini, it's at the moment around $400 or cheaper if you get it on discount. By the way, I dropped some affiliate links in the video description if you want to buy the Dwarf Mini Smart Telescope. And at this moment, it's also at discount. So don't forget to check the affiliate links out. On a $10,000 as a photography rig, you might buy accessories that are more expensive than a smart telescope like this one. So let's say you already have a dedicated setup. Do I recommend the Dwarf Mini or to have also a secondary smart telescope? And definitely I'll say yes, because this will allow you also to travel. You'll be able to take it with you everywhere. You'll be able to capture targets that you might not be able to capture from your backyard, especially if you have obstructions. And I do want to make also other comparisons like this in the future and comparing different targets like galaxies, star clusters or nebula or even the moon. So let me know in the comments what you think about these comparisons if you like them and you want to see more. If you find this video interesting and you enjoyed watching, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share it and also join the channel membership to get access to massive photography data and of course to support the channel. I want to give thanks to all the channel members that already supported the channel. It means a lot. By the way, don't forget to check also my other videos with the Dwarf Mini or other smart telescopes. And hope to see you all in the next video. I wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Until next time, clear sky.